This is a 1978 Kawasaki KZ400, and I just bought it from that auction house over there for about $348. My goal for today is to get this thing running and ride it home, because I'm an idiot. So the one thing I noticed is both tires are flat and this thing pushes like a stubborn mule. But we're gonna get it running before we get the tires fixed, just because that makes sense. This thing is really complete though. I'm happy with our purchase. So let's start at the front and take a gander exactly what we bought. Tires and tubes are shot, rim strips are hanging out. So we know for sure that's gonna need to be addressed. But the fender is nice and straight. The fork seals are as leaky as can be. That's, you know, expected. Turn signals are attached. We have this big fairing that they added on. In 77, they actually had three models of this bike. They had the standard, the special, and the deluxe. The deluxe came with a small front fairing and saddlebags, but this isn't one of them. This is actually a special, if I'm not mistaken, because we have a front drum brake. If this was a standard or a deluxe, we'd have a uh, single disc front brake up here, but this one here is the price fighter version, the cheap version, and that came with a uh, drum brake in the front. Also, another fun fact is the special is kickstart only. The standard had electric start. Now this bike new in 1977, 1978 would have cost you about $995 for the bare bones special KZ400. So the special is the less expensive one. I know, right? Like who names this stuff? So we have a nice fairing and this is all, I mean, other than the windshield here being broken, this is in really nice shape. And look, see what you did here. It still has the headlight bucket on oh, here. Oh, nice. But you pull the headlight and your wires run up through here and you stick your headlight on the outside. That way you can see where you're going at night. So we got brakes, front brake. Yeah, that's moving. Everything's moving there. That feels good. What do we got here? B BPC and badge number. What would BPC stand for? I'm thinking it's a police By term. Byproduct of Connecticut. Because this was a uh, Deputy Sheriff Association of Pennsylvania. I don't know. Maybe I, I thought that was like maybe a, a parking pass or something. Big police cops. Big police cops. We have 38,800 miles on this bike, so just under 40,000 miles. Looks like we're missing a left mirror, but we have the right mirror. Throttle's working. Gauges are all intact. Let's see what we got inside this fairing. We are rich with stuff. What is that, Craig? That's stuff. That's what, that's, that's the technical the thing. term. What do we have in here? Ooh. Okay. Oh, look at that. Look at that, we have Kawasaki branded wrenches. Nice. How cool is that? Spoke wrench, a little spoke wrench, branded Kawasaki. Got both halves of my pliers here. Aspirin bottle. Every old guy needs to carry aspirin on his motorcycle because when he's having so much fun, it's very easy to have a heart attack and you got to eat your aspirins. Well, that's exciting. I'm really excited about these wrenches. That's cool. I like that stuff. What else do we got? Oh, I found the aspirins that came out of the bottle. All right, what do we got here? Clutch. That's all feeling good. Tank, tank is super clean. We have both side shields, side panels. That's nice, those things are always missing. I don't know where they go. Look at this rear fender, nice and straight. This is nice and straight. Tail light is nice and intact. Turn signals are intact. Ooh, here, let's see, do we have a date? April of 1982-83 was the last time this bike was stickered. So that's almost like 40 years ago. Okay, rear tire, rear tire is the same as the front tire. A shot. Chain is nice and rusty. And we have a drum brake on the back. That's to be expected on a less expensive cheap model like this. Oh, saddlebags, let's open. Let's, let's see what we got in these saddlebags. Spring, it's right around the corner. That one there's a little, we're gonna have to address that before we go for a ride. That one's a little shaky. What do we got in here? Paper. What do you think that says? Ooh. Application for Fidelity Bond. Please use corporate company name exactly as it appears in completing this form. Look, this is dated 10 of 71. Ooh. So this is back when you used to be able to buy bonds. This bike's a time capsule. Sure is. We have a little tear here in the seat, but that was probably just because the guy kept his wallet in this back pocket over here and wore that out. Oh, that's what that is. All in all, this bike is in really nice shape. Everything's looking good. Everything is looking really complete. The throttle works. 
engine's free. Carburetors, uh, it's got a set of key and CV carbs on there. Hopefully these intake boots aren't cracked too bad that we can get away with them. Spark plugs are nice and easy to get to. This is a little twin cylinder. You know what I don't see? I don't see a key. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. There's no key here. There's no key here. Uh-oh. No key there. There was no keys in here. Any keys on this side? What do we got? Oh, what's that? It's a key. Oh. Well, that's not going to be it. Is that just a luggage key? Probably the key to the guy's shed. <laughs> doesn't even go to the bike. That doesn't fit in anywhere. Okay. I'm going to forget like we didn't see that. Gas tank. Oh, shoot. There's another even a key in there. That's just, that's just spinny, spinny, spinny. Boy, we're not gonna get real far if I can't get this open. Oh boy, shoot, this could be a thing. The key's important because that turns the ignition on, that opens the fuel cap, and that comes in here and pops the seat off. Wait, that's all one key? I would have, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's the key we don't have. All right, so I need a, I don't know, maybe a screwdriver. Let's see if we can open some things up. I don't want to mess up this tank. This tank's in way too nice a shape, at least on the outside. You say how nice the tank is, Craig. Wait until we get on the inside. Oh, man. I don't know. I hope we can get on the inside. What do we got here? Okay, side panel's off. That's where the battery goes. I wish I was a lock pick, Smith. But Craig, if you were a locksmith, you wouldn't be a mechanic. You would be a mechanic of locks. Or not to break things if I don't have to. Dang it. All right, so we need to get the tank open and we need to get the seat up. And I'm not sure how to do that here at the moment. Boy, we could just strike it out here. All right, Dan, we're gonna have to, we have to, we may have to get a little creative here. Let's see what's under this side cover. Watch, that's where they're hiding all the keys. Right? Wow, that looks really nice. Turn signal relay. Looks like the uh, rectifier, regular rectifier. So oil, we got oil in the bike. Put your ear up to it. That's what safe crackers do. It's not doing a thing. I don't know, maybe a smaller screwdriver? I'm not good at picking locks, apparently. Like, what, what do people do when they pick a lock? You're supposed to, like, feel for the mechanism a little bit. You're also supposed to use a finer tool where you can feel the mechanism through your tool, not, you know, a rubber-handled screwdriver. That's entirely speculation. Editor, look, look it up and, and see if I'm completely wrong. All right, so apparently we didn't think this through. Are these lock-picking picks? No, they're just That's picks. probably more like lock picking picks, if I had to guess. I don't really have a smaller screwdriver. I don't know. I don't know how to do this. I feel like in movies, they're also like listening to classical music while they do it. But they're like, mm, stand aside, let me put on my Bach when I break into this vault. In this case, the vault being the rusty old top end of a Kawasaki. I'm just putting stuff in there. Like, I really don't even know what I'm doing. Just jam it. Just get the flathead and jam it in there. I guess once it's broke it's only broke once right yeah so is this like an estate sale yeah so it's like somebody's relative sold off this bike and the guy probably had the real key like stashed in a cigar box right. somewhere yeah. yeah probably got sold in a box of tchotchkes <laughs> for 85 cents well let's see if we can figure out where the ignition wires go if we can get the ignition jumped maybe we can see if we have spark oh boy there's all the wires I'm not sure where that one was supposed to go did it just get noticeably colder? It does kind of feel that way. I feel like my hands weren't numb before. Right. Okay, good news is I found the harness here. I think we can jump that key switch. Bad news is I still can't get into the gas tank or lift the seat, but that's okay. Let's just take this one step at a time. First thing we need to do, okay, so we're gonna bypass this. Looks like I have some area there. Worst case is I can get some starting fluid in there, see what uh, what happens. Wor worst case being if you can't get the seat off? Yeah. Let's jump that switch. We're gonna hook a battery to it and see if we get any sort of life out of the lights or anything. So if I jump, let's jump blue and red here. Okay, blue and red are jumped. Now let's put a little juice to this. Okay. We have nothing. The chance is that that should be charged. Is that like a button you hit that shows the voltage? It doesn't work. I'm gonna pull the points cover. We'll kick it over, see if we have any sort of spark. May have to hook another battery to this. We'll see, just a step at a time, Dan. It's getting colder as the day goes on and I don't, Think that should be how things work how are you feeling about this thing so far well it's not going quite as like i thought it would but you know it's to be expected all in all i still like the bike a lot 
Nice, look how clean that is in there. That's just nice and clean. I like that. Let's try jumping the ignition side of this switch. And that should be the other two wires, which would be white and brown. We have those jumped, we have that to on. We still have the battery hooked. I don't know if that battery pack's charged or not. Do we have any way to test? No, I didn't bring my multimeter because I figured- Why? I don't know, exactly. Why bring a multimeter? Why bring a multimeter? Oh, <gasps> yo, I heard that. Look at that, we nice. got spark there. Do you see it too? Just here, I saw one little one. Oh, there. Nice. All right, this is a really big deal. Cause if we have spark, I just got a whole lot more excited. I can deal with some of the other little stuff. This is important. Oh, look. <gasps> what? The light's on. They're all on. Yeah, they are. Yeah, we have brake light too. How about turn the signal? Turn signal, right turn signal one on. Left, it's on. No way. No way. Neutral light's working. High beam indicator light's working. Turn signal indicator is working. Halfway there. Let's clean up those points a little bit with some emery cloth. Emery cloth. Point cleaner of Craig. That's right. Pro tip. Really, Craig, feels like you just, you're just snatching victory from the jaws of defeat. I hope so. Let's see if that gave us any better spark. Got the faintest spark. Let's see if I have another battery. Okay, we got some spark. Now that we have spark, I'm thinking the next step I wanna do, because this is a kickstart, I want to get a compression test and see what these cylinders look like before we kick all day and nothing happens because we don't have enough compression for the thing to start. And if the compression test holds out, and we're gonna start kicking. Compression tester. Tell me when that gauge stops moving it stopped where did it stop at not very far oh geez you can kick it a couple more times see if i was wrong but 60 70 80 so we stopped at 70. <laughs> okay i got up to 90. it's better mm, it's wiggling a little bit okay i'm at 105. that's not good look at that what the heck <laughs> Doesn't like that. Must have a pinhole in there. Oh, ooh, you're getting more out of that one. Oh, 160? Okay, so we have some compression. Yeah, we'll clean those up too. And we'll get a fresh, fresh battery there. See if that gets our spark any brighter. And then we can get this thing to start. And once it starts, that's only half the battle. I mean, we still got to get tires put on this thing. We got to make sure it's all working. And I'm going to hop on it and ride this thing home. Because I can pretty much guarantee I'm the only one that's ever bought a bike at this auction and tried to ride it home. I like being first. Because if we're not first, you're last. Let's see here if this fresher battery is going to give us any better, any better spark. A little better spark. I'm gonna clean these up the best I can, see if we can't uh, get a little life out of this engine with these old plugs. This is kind of like a hope and a prayer. We're gonna see if we get any life out of this bike. Cause if we do, then I'll be a little more excited again. Okay, so we got plugs, key. You gotta put the key on, key is on. Let's see what happens here. This'll be a thing. What? What? I was getting a little nervous. Oh, there was nothing, noise. and then suddenly there was that. <laughs> go, go, go. Hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it. Oh hit my it. god. Hit it, hit it. Ah, hit it. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yes. All right. Yes. Okay, that's a good sign. That is wild. I did not see that coming. I didn't think it was going to straight up do that. Run? Yeah. That's what we do. That's what is what we do. Yeah.
Should have seen it coming. Like literally that is what we do. Surprises me every time. I know, I know, it's great. Now that we heard it run and that was really exciting, I'm gonna pull the front and the rear tire and we're gonna run them to a shop and get some new rubber put on here so we can get this thing home. I don't know if it runs good enough yet to get us home, but it runs. I don't wanna ride the on bike on, on these. Balloons. Flat balloons. So let's get these pulled off. Oh, oh, it's chilly. Let's get these pulled off and then we're just gonna keep taking this as it comes. Now what are the chances the bike's gonna sit there? Yeah! Wow! No way! Look at that. Look at that. This is the sketchy thing. Sketchy's a mindset. That's the front. This is the back. Nice. Dunlop 404 is back in the day. It would have been a really, really, really good tire. Now they're just a good tire? Now they're just pretty good. Apparently the Continentals that were on this thing were also a super hot tire back in the day. Still didn't get any warmer. Yeah, let's see if I can do this without breaking the bike. Let's get this. Goes in there. All right, we're getting places. I'm not sure where, but we're getting places. Can you take this adjustable hammer and tap this in for me? Well, here, maybe I can do it. Nailed it. Works every time, most of the time. That's right. There we go. And then this nail, this nail was in there. <laughs> We're gonna put that back. We're gonna put that back. That's a very important piece of and this. And then we take our hammer. There, that ain't going nowhere. <laughs> Perfect. <clears throat> there. There we go. Everything's a hammer, unless it's a screwdriver. And then it's a chisel. Comment below if you buy the Craig calendar, Craig parking lot calendar. <laughs> I think we all know the answer is yes, Dan. I mean, that's what we gotta put in the store. You always wanna use new cotter pins when you do this, uh, unless you're in the parking lot of a restaurant doing this and, and then, then you don't have to. In which case you can use rusty old nails. In, in which case you can just, yep, use rusty old nails or whatever you feel like it. Cotter pins lasted 40 years. It's gonna last another couple of days. Man. I'm running out of daylight and that has me a little concerned. Okay, so we need to quickly figure out how in the world we can get this thing on the road with fuel. I can't get the gas cap open right at the moment because we don't have the key. Maybe, what's that? What? It's leaking. It's almost like it's leaking water. It doesn't seem like gas coming out of there. Oof. What? Oh. Oof. No, we still didn't even pull these carburetors off. Did the fuel line just break? Is that what? I can't even get in there to get different fuel line on it at the moment because of, I can't get this off to get this off to get that off. Oh my, my, let's just hold on here. See what's going on. Yeah. Just stick an IV to it. <laughs> you make it sound like a bad thing. Hey. I'm not gonna say it's a bad thing. There, it is a thing. No, nothing's running out. It's a good sign. I read a comment in the last video. Somebody said they want to see what I carry in my tool roll. A little bit of everything. Some wrenches, some drivers. Some wrenches, some, some, sockets. some sockets, some screwdrivers. Adjustable hammer. Always carry an adjustable hammer, both standard and metric. Some paprika. Amazing what some new spark plugs will do. What are the chances that this thing's gonna run good enough without going through the carburetors? I'm gonna say a, a three out of five. Man, that's better than 50%. That's true, it's better than like a coin it. toss. I don't know what's dripping. Uh, something's dripping? Every once in a while, something's dripping. Okay, there we have that. Dan, you're on spray patrol. 
and then holding the gas. Hit it now? Yep. Oh, here we go. Get ready. All right, I was spraying. It's trying. Keep going. I'm running out. All right. I'm out. <laughs> it's like the carb is. This carburetor is going to have to come apart, I'm afraid. So the sun's going down and it's cold and the bike won't run off of fuel. It just runs off of starting fluid. So we got to pull the carburetors and we're just running out of time for the day. So we're going to leave this thing here, just kind of where it's at for the night. And we're going to come back to it in the morning. All right, so my plan for this video was to buy this bike at this auction house, get it running in the parking lot and ride it home. Mother Nature had other plans, but we've come this far and I'm not going to quit now. We still need to get this bike running. Now you think if a guy's job was riding motorcycles and putting videos on YouTube, he would look at the weather a little more often. Whoops. I knew it was coming. It just came a little sooner than I thought it would. So in preparation for the snow, I did do a little work off camera. I cleaned the carburetors. Dan, cue that carburetor montage. All right, that was awesome. These were by far, I think, the worst carburetors I have ever seen. It took me a better part of the day in a shop to get these things clean. Now, I still didn't run this bike off of gas and we still have some work to do. I'd like to change the oil. I got to hook up a battery and I need to get it to start off the fuel tank. I promised my wife I wouldn't do anything stupid today. We'll see how the day goes. All right, Dan, Let's get to work. The first thing I want to do here is sit in the truck and warm up. That's not an option. Okay. We gotta get to work. Let's get to work. I think where we're gonna start is, this thing is probably just bitter cold. The oil is gonna be like molasses. Hmm, how do I want to do this? Let's get it running. Let's see if we can get this thing running. And then maybe I get a little heat in the engine, and then I'm gonna drop the oil, put some fresh oil in, and we're gonna, I don't know if we're gonna ride this home or not, but we'll see. Let's get to where it rides. You gotta, gotta have some more optimism than that. Okay, first steps first. Oh, Dan, can you get... You gotta do the snow wiggle. Yeah, here. <laughs> <clears throat> Perfect. It's my snow angel, it's gonna be with me today. I think to get this thing to start, I'm gonna to need to hook in a battery and I need to finish hooking up the fuel line. I still gotta get that fuel cap open. So we're gonna start with some screwdrivers, give it a little twist. We'll see what the tank looks like on the inside. We're gonna hook up a fuel filter, give it some kicks. This thing's gonna purr like kitten. All right, tools, we're gonna to need tools. Oh man, nice. Trying to do all this without ruining the lock so that I can get a key made and, uh, you know, have a working motorcycle that doesn't require paper clips and screwdrivers to get it started. Oh, man. Did that just pop? No way. What? Oh, it just needed a little more cold. Well, why the heck didn't it do that the other day? You just needed to put some snow on it. What the? <laughs> okay. Did you do it? I didn't touch the tank. Well, what the heck? Well, I certainly Is ain't gonna... Is it broken? Did you break it? I don't know. Unless I just got super lucky. Huh. Well, you know, even a blind squirrel can find a nut in a snowstorm. All right. Well, if we're having that such luck, let's see if we can get the seat open. It's chilly here in Pennsylvania today. At least your head's nice and warm. 
I just assume your head's warm because my head's warm and I'm wearing the same yeah. hat. Thanks, Gruber. <laughs> All right. Well, I can't get that seat open right now. Let's do what we can do. Let's get a battery on here and let's get some fuel to it. Okay, so I don't have the right battery for this bike, but all we need is 12 volts. Just enough to saturate that coil, get some spark out of it. And I did, I did make up last night while I was watching it snow, contemplating my life choices in the shop. I made these up. These are little pigtails. So the way this is gonna work, Put this on here. I can't feel my fingers. Oh, I should've brought my hand warmers. Screw that one up, Dan. That would've been good. Then my hands could've been warm and your hands would've been even colder by comparison. Picked a beautiful day for this. Heck yeah, we did. Oh yeah, all we need is like a, a horse-drawn sleigh to come past. Whoa, it's, it's Santa. Santa. <laughs> He's coming back because it's, it's snowing in Pennsylvania. <laughs> It's crazy. Santa in the sky with diamonds. My everything is frozen. Oh, yep, yeah, here, electrical tape. We're gonna need that. Ooh, it's the Super 33. That's the good stuff. Okay, this is the hot, so I'm gonna just wrap this in a bit of tape just so I know we're, we're okay. Brings back the old days when I used to have to work outside all the time. Battery. Um, oh, you know what? I guess we're gonna need tape. I gotta tape. Okay, we gotta tape this battery into here. Let's see if we can wrap some tape around here. Electrical tape sticks so good when it's minus degrees outside. Oh, yeah. This is definitely gonna work. I don't even know which way is up anymore. I don't even know what I'm doing here. All right, let's put this up here. Are you losing your mind? Yep. <laughs> look at what we're doing, Dan. Does it look like I'm losing my mind? <laughs> How's that? Oh. Pff. Yeah? Solid as Solid? Can be. Solid as can be. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay, I need to put a... F well, here, what does the tank look like? Now we got this open. Ooh. Yeesh. Okay. All right. Like some yikes down there. Yeah. Okay, good news is it's not the worst I've seen. Bad news is, it's not the best I've seen either. Let's put this on there so that we don't get any more ice in there. I need a fuel filter and I need a little fuel line. Let's see what we got. All right, we got a fuel line. Oh, we got a fuel filter. Okay. Oh, like magic. It just came out of the bag. <laughs> Abrica fuel filter. Abrica fuel filter. Okay. So fuel flows that way. According to the arrow, I see the arrow. Fuel's gonna come out of the tank through here, through the filter, into the carburetor. Bike's gonna go over them. This is less than ideal, but that's kind of just the way my life is. A little extra fuel line never hurt anybody. Okay, so we have battery, we have fuel filter, we have fuel line, clean carburetor. We're gonna have to hook this up to here. Shoop, just like that. Okay, let's put some gas in this thing and see if it'll come out of the tank through that filter. Beautiful day. Told Dan not to let me forget to get gas. Oh, Craig, uh, you're, yeah, you need to get gas. Guess we have a little in the IV bottle yet if we need it. Okay, this is going swimmingly. All right, now this is a vacuum operated petcock. So what that means is there's a secondary line coming into this petcock that's running off of vacuum pulses from the intake track. And that's working this little diaphragm and that's allowing fuel to go through. Now, vacuum operated petcocks also have a prime position. This one here is marked by PRI. So if I put this in prime, gas just <laughs> runs out. Really? Uh, biscuits. Why? 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 Why is that happening? Okay. That's neat. <sighs> That's not what I wanted, but let's go get the IV bottle. We're gonna stick the IV bottle on here and see if this thing will start. I'm starting to wonder why I ever thought it would be a fun idea to buy a bike at an estate sale and then try to get it running and ride it home in the middle of winter. Yeah, the fact they didn't give us a key uh, made it really fun. We were off to a fantastic start. Okay, so let's turn these on. Let's get some fuel, hopefully running through there, into the carburetors. All right, speaking of keys, did I bring my key? Starter, starter key, key. Got it, okay. 
So we're gonna jump that wire and this wire. I'm gonna put my ground on. Do we have any sort of lights? Uh, yeah. Yes. 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 <laughs> Horn works. Okay, so here's where we're at. We got a battery. We have an IV with some gas in it. Got my paper clip in the ignition. I got my lights on. I got frozen hands. Yo, Beautiful we're, day. We're ready to go. Let's see if this bike will start. Okay, I don't have grip, so these are these are just nice and cold. Take your bare hands on the bare steel. And lick it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How many kicks, Dan? Uh, this is a very cold start. I'm gonna say nine and a half. I'm not sure how we're gonna get a half, but I'll figure it out. Yeah, I, I'll tell you which one's the half. Okay. Okay, we got our switch on. That was one, two. Ooh! Four! Oh, little kickback. Oh, that's kickback. Might, that might have been half. Oh. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh! Oh, oh 10. How many, wait, how many kicks did you guess? 11, 12. 13, 14. I'm not sure if I have the choke on or off. And we are getting some gas through, I would assume. Uh, 15. Are my lights still on? Yeah. Okay. I don't see it flickering or anything, so. I feel like we lost spark. Dang, can you kick it over, see if we have a little spark? Okay, we got spark. I'm gonna give it a couple more kicks here. Let's see what happens. Yeah, get hey. that again. Yeah! 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 Yes! Yes! My dream is not dead! <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> Does it ride well? No. <laughs> I'm just trying everything to hold this together. Not crash. <laughs> oh yeah, you're gonna be all right at home like that. Later, suckers! Greg, come back! Greg, come back! The snow will kill you! This is totally plausible. And then, just as Craig was almost ready to make the ride home, he decided to go off-roading. You're not supposed to ride that in the My snow. My hands are so cold. Doesn't like that. Oh, geez. I hooked the battery up backwards. There we go. How's that? What? <laughs> now do we have any lights? I may have just blown a fuse. Oh, uh, no, we don't have lights. Okay. So you blew a fuse? Blew a fuse. Okay. Oh, what was that? I don't know. That sounded like something popped. Yeah. You don't have lights. I don't know why that, that would work. I think I blew a fuse. Well, I don't know. I'm going to call that a win. I don't think it's a good idea to ride this thing home today. We may wait till spring. But we did buy this bike at the auction. Drug it across the parking lot. Got it to run. Did a couple donuts out in the parking lot. Went through the cornfield. Yeah. Even bashed some snow drifts. That's kind of like riding at home. My hands are numb. My bike's broke. And I'm hungry. Thanks for watching. That is a nice setup though. Yeah, I'm liking this. <laughs>
should do that more often. <laughs> <laughs>